Good afternoon again everyone, welcome to another video and I hope you're keeping well. I'm back on the Icknill Way again, this is part two and this is Chalk Hill to Streetly, another 10 mile section, I'm joined by my mate Richard again. Hi guys. We're sat in the White Lion Pub, which is the start of this section, end of last section. We've got half an ass for each, we're starting the, the walk off right. <laughs> and we're going to be wild camping tonight at a, a familiar place i've been there before sharp and hoe clappers hill fault in the sundon hills really really good little spot that i know of. i've been there before with candice i'll try and put a link to that video up here somewhere and i have got my oex bush pro tarp and bivy tonight richard his shelter I've just sold to him <laughs> basically I had another brand new pro action tiger paws hike light one person tent that little cult classic tent that seems to have gone out of production by pro action picked it up on eBay and I sold it to Richard so he's gonna be taking that out on its maiden voyage tonight he said he wanted a sort of a, a lightish weight tent for a better night's sleep and stuff really yeah i'm, yeah. I'm looking i'm looking forward to it it's um I, i've not slept in tents particularly for the last god knows how many years so to go back to having a sort of small compact reasonably lightweight tent uh, i'm looking forward to it just give me a bit of versatility for different nights um depending on weather and things like that as well so definitely yeah because i mean last time when we did we camped at five knolls we we, <laughs> we were quite close to a foot bath again and I think a dog licked you in the face at five in the morning. <laughs> he did, yeah. Wasn't he? yeah. <laughs> so, you know, Richard wants that security of like a dog proof shelter <laughs> this time. So that's 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 the reasoning behind it anyway. So we're gonna we're gonna quaff these and I think the footpath continues over the, the main road. Apologies you can probably hear that at the moment. And yeah, it's gonna be a, a good little section this might not be as steep as the last one the last section was pretty good anyways we're not walking yet so enough thinking and let's get drinking cheers cheers we've just done our good deed for the day we just found i think one of them apple watches or is it an apple watch or iphone watch apple watch yeah i don't know and it had the the person's picture with their kids on it and i went i've just seen them people in the beer garden so richard went back and went we think we found you watching it was theirs and that was a bit of luck no uh, finders fee though Ms. no Ruth. finders fee no because last time i found someone's phone at a gig in brentwood this bloke bought me a round of drinks and he literally was like i'd suddenly become like his best friend i suppose he was probably hammered so he thought why not but you know still do a good deed it goes a long way sort of so as you can probably see we've got our rucksacks on our backs we're both sporting some osprey rucksacks i'm not angling for a sponsorship but i do like an osprey rucksack they're very good indeed anyways we're going to get cracking because it's i think gone 4 p.m now we've got about four hours really to get to sharp and oak clappers we want to sort of get there just before it starts getting dark maybe catch the sunset if there is one and get set up so you know what i'm gonna say enough talking let's get walking Oh, it's a busman's holiday. I think we have an outdoor gym. Yes, could be for for this uh, big building over here. This is for their staff. Keep them uh, active. Keep them productive. 
healthy body, healthy mind and all that stuff. <laughs> Go on Richard. Go on my son. Go on, keep going. Keep it going. Keep it going. The interior of All Saints Church in Chalgrave contains some medieval wall paintings discovered during the 1930s beneath layers of whitewash and a 14th century memorial, one of two effigies of armoured knights each side of the nave to Sir Nigel Loring, Lord of Chalgrave and a hero of the Hundred Years War. In 1340, his small English fleet engaged a superior French force in Slees Harbour, capturing the whole French fleet. Loring later fought at Crecy and Poitiers and was knighted by Edward III as a founder member of the Order of the Garter. His manor house stood on a prominent mound southeast of the churchyard. His exploits became the subject of two ripping yarn adventure stories by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle.
the highest points in Bedfordshire, the Sundon Hills offer fantastic views over the surrounding countryside. The site is important for many species of plants and animals, including the fly orchid, great spotted woodpecker, foxes and badgers. Welcome back everyone, somehow against all odds we've made it to Sharp and Ho Clappers, we've got that amazing view that you probably remember from the video that I did with Candice when we wild camped up here, it's a real hidden gem, it's a forgotten hillfall really, you never hear anyone talk about the Clappers and it's amazing. So. We're here a lot later than planned. We wanted to try and get here for about 8 p.m. That was definitely not gonna happen. And it's about 9 p.m. now. Thankfully, it's still quite light in summer. I feel absolutely shattered. I look like I've been molested or something or abused. I feel I've aged about 40 years. Richard, he's like an absolute mountain goat. He just carries on going. He puts younger people to shame, I'm telling you. But then he's been doing this all his life and he's done stuff a lot tougher. So I'm just, yeah, just not going to keep up. So we're here anyway, that's the main thing. Uh, we'll get to the spot and I think we'll just get set up and I'll. I'll sort of bring you back then, but I'm probably not going to film a lot in camp tonight. I'm absolutely shattered. I just want to eat, have a couple of drinks, and get a good night's kip. I'll I'll show you the rest of Sharp and O Clappers and bits of history about it and stuff in the morning. I think we just want to find the spot first. Welcome back everyone, it's about 10pm now and we are on Sharp and Ho Clappers Hillfort. We're not far from the spot that myself and Candice camped at last time. We tried looking for that spot and because the light was was really fading we we couldn't find it really but we found probably a slightly better spot it's a little bit more spacious so i've set the oex bush pro tarp up that's above me in a lean to with overhang configuration and then sort of the bottom bit is tucked under kind of like when i did the garden camp i've just done exactly the same as that and then richard has pitched his brand new Pro action tiger paws or hike light, whichever one it is, one person tent, exactly the same as my one. I basically had bought a second one uh, that I was planning to give away as a gift, and in the end, I was like, he needed a tent, it fit the criteria, so I've sold him a tent, and he absolutely loves it, didn't you? It's brilliant, fantastic tent. It's brilliant. Um, it's nice, it's brilliant headroom loads of space for one person um i've literally put it up in the dark so mm. it'd be interesting to see what it looks like tomorrow but uh to be honest it's almost idiot proof for putting it up it is it's so simple he's literally got in it and not come out of it he's cooked in there everything I'm, so i'm living here i'm not moving yeah it's that good it, it kind of makes me wish i'd have bought my pro action tent as well i nearly did but I've got this kind of crazy idea where I'm thinking I'm going to try and do the entire Ickneald Way with a tarp and bivy. Like di a different bivy, a different tarp each time, but just do that. And Because I want to sort of get more confident with sleeping in a tarp and bivy and, and confident sort of testing them out and 
I suppose being confident that they'll work in all weathers, really. Absolutely shattered. We've got a Copperberg Rosé, which Richard very kindly gave me. Thank you very much. And this is something different. This is going to be dinner tonight. You've probably all had these before. I've never even tried them before, just because of the price range, really. Adventure food, pasta bolognese, dehydrated meal. So that's just rehydrating. That fuel bottle means that I'm using the BCB Fire Dragon gel fuel stove. Dessert is the Adventure Food chocolate mousse, dehydrated. Other ciders we've got. Oh, I'm doing all of this now, so I haven't got to sort of spend the whole night doing it because I want to get to sleep a bit earlier. We've got a Lily's cider this one is gladiator and it's the strongest one i've come across so far it is 8.4 percent <laughs> so it's yeah it's a strong one a strong well-rounded fruity rustic cider full of flavor this medium cloudy cider is intox intoxicatingly easy to drink sort of yeah like a cloudy very orangey sort of almost like lava kind of look to it and it's got some sediment in it look at the sediment I do like sediment in ciders it's usually i think a sign of good quality if they've got a bit of sediment in them you know they're a bit different we've got a recorder league premium botanicals this one is blackberry violet juniper Pear cider blended with blackberry and infused with a hint of violet and juniper made from pure Swedish spring water, 4%. I need the head torch on so I can't see what I'm doing otherwise, so I'm getting blinded by it there. Oh, it's rehydrated nicely, it's got it's got peas in it as well, which is a surprise. Oh, I'm absolutely starving, even if it's not great i'll still eat it <sighs> so ooh. Yeah, you might just be able to see it there all right let's try some hmm that's not bad I mean, it's not the most flavorable thing a lot of people said these meals are quite salty tasting i don't mind that though that's all right i don't feel like i need to tonts that up with anything really that's fine on its own i like that it's got like peas in it as well so a bit of variety the decathlon pasta bolognese is is really nice but there's there's not a lot going on in it it's, it's very basic this has got a little bit more to it i don't think the portion size is as big as a decathlon one and it's slightly different pasta right different shape pasta if that makes sense that is good though i have purchased a few adventure food meals for a couple of future camps not loads just just a few like i probably got about two other camps worth that's about it um, i'm just going to see what they're like really i'm just going to try out different dehydrated meals i think see what ones are like and then i can always treat myself to them in the future but ideally long term i'd love to get a like a food dehydrator and then i could like just dehydrate my own meals and stuff and it'd be a bit easier definitely and cheaper and you know you've got more variety of food then so we're gonna crack open the lily's gladiator cider and before we do i'd like to sort of give a shout out and I suppose dedicate this cider to a subscriber who's going through a bit of a rough patch at the moment Carl from New Milton I believe if you're watching this mate um, yeah so I think I think it was a friend of Carl's had contacted me saying that he's like a, a you know an, an avid or was an avid walker and camper but he's recently suffered like a really bad stroke and he's sadly now in a wheelchair and he really likes the channel so i really appreciate that mate thank you very much and yeah i'm sorry to hear about that it's 
I can't imagine what that must be like. It is honestly probably awful knowing that you know that it's it's made it that much more difficult to get out and stuff. And I just think you know we all need to remember that yeah we shouldn't take anything for granted because it can happen to any of us at any time. So you know sort of don't wait for things like that to happen. Like just get out and and you know and do stuff and and go walking and stuff and camping and whatnot um so i don't i don't exactly know you know sort of how it all works but you know if there's a recovery process there i hope you have a, a speedy recovery soon mate so and that's from me and richard and yeah sort of anyone in the comments wants to wish carl well please do so this one's for you mate cheers let's crack it open Richard wants some of this as well, so I'll pour some out for him. Oh, it's got a, it's got a strong smell to it. <laughs> oh, and it's got, yeah, a lot of sediments and stuff. It's very cloudy and it's, it's flat as well. Right, where's, where's your mug? There we go. There it is. Right, say when. My, you can tell the difference because mine doesn't have the pouring spout. Oh uh, yeah, when. When, 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 when. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Cheers, mate. Yeah, Richard's uh, highlighting to that that I, I accidentally basically burnt a hole in my mug. And I've literally just bought it. So, yeah, right, see right. what you think. Cheers, Carl. Cheers to you, Carl. Oh, lot smoother than I was anticipating. That's very smooth. Wow. That is really smooth. That is, I can see what they mean by it's intoxicatingly easy to drink, mm. despite being an eight point four percent. That's a that's a lovely little brew. I could happily drink that. I was really worried about this one because I don't like strong ciders, and I was thinking that's going to be absolutely awful. And I kept putting it off and putting it off. I tell you what, that is. That's so smooth. You would not know that's eight point four percent. Easy drink a couple of them, couldn't you? Yeah, definitely. You can't. Yeah, some of, some of these strong ones. As soon as you take a, ki a, a, a sip, the, the alcohol kicks you. Yeah. This this you can't really taste any significant boot from the alcohol. He says uh, a lovely smooth smooth drink. That's better than some of the weaker ones they do. Like I had uh, Stargazer. Uh, oh, that was on Chanctonbury Ring, and that that wasn't actually as good as this. This is this is better. I'm really surprised at that. I, I don't really know what it tastes like. It's uh, not really. I suppose there is apples in it, and I'm sort of getting that taste, but not. It's not very prevalent. I don't know. It's just sort of a. There's almost a very slight orangey tang to it as well. Yeah, let me try another one. It's got to be thorough for you, Carl, so it's going to be a, a thorough review. <laughs> we might have to drink all of that first before we uh, give it a, a rating out of 10. Yeah, there is a slight orangey tang to it, definitely. I just can't believe how smooth it is. Like, I thought it was going to be really rough and I was going to hate it and probably end up giving it all to Richard, but that is amazing. What would you give it out of 10? I'm going to go an 8.25. Okay. Purely because it's a bit of a wolf in sheep's clothing, and I think you could get yourself in some serious trouble with that <laughs> <laughs> by, yeah, by, well, by necking a couple of pints of that and being all over the place. So that's yeah, but that you can't you can't you can't hold that against the side. You make it sound like it's that's wrong. No, or, oh, it got me drunk. It's going to get less points. Like that's no, no, no but it's it, it's not got the it's, for me. It's not got the classic cidery taste that I like. Put it that way. Oh, fair enough. Okay. Well, I. Okay, so you go 8.25. I think because I, I'm so surprised by that. I thought it was going to be awful. I thought I was going to hate it. Do you know what I'm going to go with? I'm going to go with. I'm going to give it the same percent, the same as its percentage. I'm going to give it 8.4 out of 10. I think it's really good. Honestly, it sounds like I've given it a low score, despite how much we've praised it. But I don't want to say nine because nine could be a bit too much. Um, but for smoothness, 
alone, yeah, it, it gets it gets eight plus definitely. That is really good. That one. Sorry, you can't really see it because of the lighting and stuff. We'll figure that out one day. Um, that's that's brilliant. Yeah, Lily's Gladiator cider, lovely stuff. Well, I've just rehydrated the chocolate mousse adventure foods meals 300 calories you don't need to put a lot of water in this one and it's, it's quite difficult to mix you have to really mix it thoroughly before you zip it up and let it rehydrate in fact I don't really think you even need to zip it up and then leave it you can you just mix it up but there's like powder that's like doesn't get mixed in at the bottom you have to really sort of dig down and mix it all up and then of course it thickens it actually looks like it's got a really good consistency to it so we're talking yeah a chocolate mousse but it looks like it's got little chocolate bits in as well it's the worst lighting ever let's try it anyway oh, it smells so good it smells like really like not rich chocolate but like it it doesn't smell like artificial chocolate it smells like proper chocolate oh Oh hello. Oh that's that's a bit special. That's better than a normal chocolate mousse you'd buy in the shop. Because there's like little chocolate bits in it as well. I know this is nothing new to anyone there. You've probably all had these before. Like I say, I've just never tried them, but that is that's incredible. Hmm. The only downside I've noticed to uh, dehydrated dessert meals is the portions are really small you get like absolutely sod all the main meals you get a lot in the breakfast you get a bit more the desserts you get nothing in maybe i'm just greedy and i like a big pudding but uh, <laughs> I don't do a small slice of cake, I do a big slice of cake, so fat boy. But you know, you've got to treat yourself. Look at that. Oh, yeah, portion sizes could be a bit bigger. Hmm, <laughs> that is incredible. So, that's two really good meals I've had for, from Adventure Foods, and I'm looking forward to trying out the other ones that I've purchased. Richard's going to sleep in his new pro action tent. He absolutely loves it. I love it. Absolutely loves it. I'm so happy for him. So we've polished off that Gladiator cider by Lily's. Very nice indeed. Bit of a surprise. A pleasant one. And we're on to the Recalled League Premium Botanicals. Oh, that's nice blackberry violet and juniper i mean i don't really know what i'm look, looking for in terms of violet and juniper i can't really think what they taste like but definitely a blackberry taste to it very like herbal and i don't know it, it tastes like a like a sort of detox sort of herbal tea but in cider format it's not overly fizzy I actually think it's probably not as good as the Gladiator, even though it's a fruity cider, and I do like a fruity cider. I like something that's a little bit quirky and a bit different. I think that's where I was saying to Richard just now that I've had so many different ciders that you're always looking for something a little bit different. Like a, I think for me, a normal cider tasting cider is not enough, whereas Richard likes a cider to taste like a cider. Whereas me, I do like that, but I like yes fruity stuff quirky ciders you know things like that like if they did a chocolate cider i'd be all over that it'd probably taste awful that anyway we're, we're getting off track so mm. 7.9 something like that the ratings don't mean anything anymore it's just it's good it's a good cider that's it really yeah if you like a fruity cider try that that's about it really so we've had we had three absolute barnstormers of ciders tonight. We had that Copperberg Rosé from Richard. We had the Lily's 
Gladiator Cider, and we've got this Recorder League Premium Botanical Blackberry Violet Juniper Cider. So, can't get much more variety than that. So, Richard's going to sleep now. I'm going to finish this cider. I may do myself another herbal nighttime tea, and I'm going to hit the sack. Enough yawning, and I'll see you in the morning. Night, everyone. Morning everyone, it's coming up to 8am, we've had a nice little lay in, we were due to get up at about 7 but as you can probably hear it's raining, it's been raining for quite a while, this was forecast so we, we knew it was going to rain, it did sort of start raining whilst we were setting up last night and then it stopped and then you heard sort of little faint bits sort of throughout the night while we were awake and once we were asleep yeah it pretty much rained most of the time I think I know it definitely started up in the early hours report on the night's sleep I slept well eventually I had a night terror at some point a bit of a strange one it was uh I think it's sort of like one of those typical ones you get while camping you think there's people around you or people found you or something well I was more frustrated that I think it must have been the the steady influx of of improper wild campers that have taken to the sport lately and I was getting pissed off that there were so many of them and there was loads of people I thought there was loads of people coming through here and that one of them had a drone and was flying a drone under my tarp and was like hovering around my face it was probably like a, a little fly or something like bzzz. anyway needless to say I swore a lot loudly at about half three in the morning woke Richard up apologies for that mate um, it broke the seal for him so he then needed a piss so it, and that broke his sleep pattern as well so yeah I feel a bit bad about that um, but apart from that I then slept really well after that so I obviously needed to get it out of my system Richard slept really well apparently in his new tent fantastic sleep you absolutely love the tent yeah very good he top loves banana it. top banana he loves it so he's just doing some brekkie at the moment so for breakfast this time we've got another Norwegian Army Arctic Field Ration. This one is porridge, 1300 calories. So you get some porridge, like these uh, dehydrated main meals are like really hefty. There's there's a lot of food in there. And what I've done is, because it's a plain porridge, I've just added uh, kind of like some mixed like nuts, dried fruit, some little bits of dried chocolate, things like that. Stuff like that really. And you also get a hot chocolate, some Colombian freeze-dried coffee. A little wet wipe, a multivitamin tablet, two pieces of spearmint chewing gum, 
some chilli and garlic flavoured beef snacks, so kind of like beef jerky, that sort of stuff. Uh, raspberry flavoured kind of isotonic drink. Some roasted and salted peanuts from Nut Walker again. <laughs> Then I've already started eating some of it. A little 60% dark chocolate bar. I think that's about it actually. Uh, be plenty enough for for the morning and we've we've literally got probably two miles if that to get back to the car so it's not like I need a ton of food really. Um, the porridge will fill me up, that will probably keep me going through till lunch. Oh, that is some pretty filling stuff there. It's quite heavy the rain right now and I've just seen someone walking a dog just over there in the distance. So there are people still up here. But I suppose the rain has put a lot of people off really. And it's a Monday morning as well so most people are back to work. I'm back to work tomorrow as of uh, when I'm filming this anyway. So yeah, anyway, that's breakfast. So here we are in part of the woodland on Sharp and Clappers, the hill fault. The end of the promontory is over that way. We're not far from it and I reckon we're not far from the spot where me and Candice camped last time. I reckon that is over that way somewhere. We're on a little bit of a slope. Just We found just like this weird natural little slope last night and just happened to be on that. So we were both sort of going kind of that way. But I've had worse. It was, it was fine really. So I've got my OEX Bush Pro tarp. It's not quite three by three meters. I thought it was when I bought it, so I'm a little bit, a little bit disappointed about that. But hey ho, you can still do quite a few configurations with it, and uh, the water's running off it nicely. It's working quite well, and I think it's about 800 and something grams. So it's, it's once again, it's not the lightest, but but it has got loads of guy out points there's so many on it like all across the tarp along the edges there's loops and brass eyelets so you can choose what you want to peg it peg out on or tie out on this so it's very versatile like that but because it's not quite three by three you're limited to only a handful of configurations but to be fair most of them work like what are you actually going to need really it's a bit minimalism really you, you don't need millions and millions of configurations but it is fun to try them out anyway i'm digressing and then there's richard's brand new pro action tiger paws one person tent exactly the same as mine he's very pleased with it i think he's having a doze at the moment but that's beading the water nicely as well it should do because it's brand new so everything's working it's just a little bit miserable the weather and last time I checked the time it was about half past eight it's due to ease up around half past nine so we've got an hour so he's gonna have a doze I'm gonna eat breakfast I've packed away most of the stuff under the tarp now it's just a case of getting the tarp and the tent down so we'll probably work together on those to sort of keep one lot of stuff dry and we've got two miles if that so it's not a problem it's just filming that's a problem really for me it's like filming in the rain is is it's not it's not ideal i'm glad i bought the full waterproofs out waterproof over trousers they're just from decathlon nothing fancy and then this jacket is just a regatta like 12 quid packer jacket sort of thing and i liked it because it was green and it packed up small was lightweight but it's probably not ideal for like a torrential downpour but it's it does the job really and i've got a three pound rucksack cover that i got from china and it's it's brilliant so 
you don't always need to spend a fortune on gear is what I'm saying sometimes there are things it's worth it's worth paying out on or you just try and get them as cheap as you can I don't care if it's second hand I'll happily buy it on eBay but if it's a reputable brand and it's you know it's it's the bollocks I'll get it like a rucksack you can't you don't just want to go with a cheap rucksack I think you want something comfy that's gonna carry the load well and things like that and if it means spending that little bit more money on it so be it but you'll use it for a lifetime if you look after it um, that that's another story for another time otherwise this will be about a three hour long video I'm not going to go on about gear 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 all the time anyway I'm going to just sit under there out of the rain have breakfast starving We're all packed up that didn't take too long i think the rain has actually eased off a little bit enough for us to get all that stuff squared away without any hassle so just a couple of sort of dry patches just sort of kick some leaves over again we even found a plastic water bottle over there that was identical to my drinking bottle it was a smart water bottle it wasn't mine we of course didn't see it last night when we turned up in the dark so we've taken that with us as well always do your bit you know pack out your own stuff and any other little bits around you i think especially if like in my case like filming as well because if anyone watches this video and then comes and camps in this exact same spot and sees rubbish they'll i naturally automatically get accused of it straight away so yeah I know it's probably not the best motive for picking up rubbish but you know don't matter the rubbish still gets taken out one way or another so it's win-win yeah but no we are leaving no trace and remember people don't be a tosser enough talking and let's get walking Beechwood on Sharp and Ho Clappers is thought to have been an Iron Age hillfall, and the chalk grasslands on the slopes below are important for many species of butterfly. The area comes alive in the summer with the sound of skylarks.
most significant occupant in a crowded area of Streetley's churchyard is Rackmaster General Thomas Norton, one time Lord of Sharpenhoe Manor. As Solicitor General to Queen Elizabeth I, his professional activities included the examination of Catholics suspected of plotting her assassination. This was done under torture on the rack to obtain satisfactory answers or confessions of guilt. He gained his nickname after boasting in 1581 of stretching a priest, Arthur Bryant, a foot longer than God made him. Welcome back everyone. We've arrived in Streetly at the Village Hall and Richard's car is just behind me over there. So that's the end of this section, part two of the Icknield Way, Chalk Hill to Streetly, 10 miles. It's been a good section. It's been really good fun so far, the Icknield Way. So I'm looking forward to the next bit. Cheers to Richard for joining me again. Thank you, it's been brilliant. Really enjoyed it. Always been a pleasure walking with Richard. It's always good fun. And yeah, the camp was good. It rains, you know, but is what it is so not a lot could be else the tarp worked fine richard's new tent that i sold him worked fine very good that's uh that's yeah that's one happy camper there he's really yeah. pleased with it so yeah, and i'm pleased that he's pleased with it so that's good who knows maybe in the future we might do a little video together with his and her tents you know the same tents and stuff we'll see so all that leaves me to say is to you guys thank you very much for watching thank you for subscribing as always Hope you enjoyed the video, get in the comments, let us know what you think. Until next time, take care of yourselves everyone, stay safe, look after each other, and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Cheers guys.